Corporate finance OneNote practice problem. In this presentation, we will work a practice problem in OneNote related to compensating balance loan with idle cash, which will count towards the compensating balance and the calculation of the effective interest rate on it. Get ready. It's time to take your chance with corporate finance. Here we are in OneNote. If you would like to follow along in OneNote, you're not required to, but if you have access to it and would like to, we are in the 825 Compensating Balance Loan with Idle Cash and Effective Interest tab in the Practice Problems section. Closing this back out, we're going to have our information up top. We'll use that to work through the practice problem down below. So let's read through all the information first, and we'll have a smaller component of that information that we can use to work through the practice problem. So we have a company will borrow $350,000. The interest rate from the bank is going to be the 18%. Now, the bank is going to say, hey, look, there's some risk to this loan. And therefore, when there's risk to the loan, the bank might do things such as increase the interest rate, possibly charge some types of fees or have some type of different loan structure in this case wanting a compensating balance so they're going to say that we want we're going to put, take 20 percent basically make it so you can't really in essence use the 20 percent even though we're going to be charging your interest on that 20 percent of the loan so when that happens then if if we were to look at that from the company standpoint we would first try to think about okay well how much money do i need and then how much how big of a loan do i need if you're going to take some portion of it 20 percent and, and make it so basically I can't use the 20% to go towards the, what I wanted to do with it. Now, we did a calculation on that in a prior presentation. We won't through, go through that again here. And we will just say that we have a $350,000 loan that we're going to be taking out. We've decided that to be the loan amount, knowing that the company is going to basically take that 20% compensating balance that is going to be a portion of the loan, but that in essence, we're not basically going to be able to use. But we are going to say, okay, well, we, the company, keep a minimum balance in our cash account. So the company keeps a minimum bank balance that counts towards the meeting of the compensating balance requirement. So we're the company, we're going to say, hey, look, you know, we know that you're trying to have this compensating balance as a minimum requirement to basically lessen the risk that we will be not likely to be able to pay you. We actually do hold on to cash in our checking account of 15,000 as our minimum balance requirement. We don't go below that amount of the minimum balance requirement. Uh, could we could we count that towards this compensating balance requirement? And we're going to say the bank is going to say yes. We're going to allow they're going to allow us to of that 20% of the loan count towards it this 15,000 that's the balance that we typically keep in our minimum balance in the checking account towards that to mitigate or minimize the risk. So let's do our calculation on this then. We're going to have a few different questions. Here's a smaller scenario of the data that we're going to need. The question then is going to be, all right, well, there's an 18% interest rate, but then you've got this compensating balance of 20%. Uh, what is going to be the effective interest rate? Can I compare this to other types of loans? I mean, what does that mean? And I mean, am I getting ripped off with this loan or not? Because I, I need to be able to compare it with other terms I might be able to get elsewhere for that we want to calculate the effective interest rate method and then we also want to know well what's the interest going to be on this loan how do i calculate the interest is it going to be on the loan amount the 350 or the loan minus uh the compensating balance and then and then you know we want to think about well how is this going to factor in to our our calculation of of how much money we get to actually use how much money of this do we actually get to use considering the fact that we have this $15,000 in the minimum balance and you got this 20% compensating balance. All right, so let's look at a few of these. First, let's think about the cost of the loan, the interest on the loan. This is gonna be a loan for one year. So the calculation for this is going to be, interest is gonna be calculated as P. This is the confusing factor here. P means the loan amount. So the loan, not the loan minus the factor, not the amount we actually kind of get to use, but we're gonna be charged interest on the loan amount times R, R is typically a, the interest rate for a year, so that's the rate, times T, which will be the fraction of the year, which in this case will simply be one because we will have it for one year. So we'll take the loan then, we're gonna say, all right, now we have the loan is gonna be the 350,000, the rate is gonna be 18%, T or time is simply one, so no, nothing new there. So we're just gonna say that that's gonna be the 63,000, that's gonna be the cost of the loan. Notice we had to calculate that on the full 350,000, even though 20% uh, of it we may not get to use, although we have to consider the 15,000 that is in our account as well. So now we need to consider the compensating balance required from the loan uh, net. So in other words, 
if we didn't have this 15,000, we would take the 350,000 times the 20%, which would be the compensating balance that we wouldn't be able to do much with. But because we have this 15,000 in there, it's going to count towards part of that calculation. So basically, we're going to say 350,000 times the 20% minus the 15,000 is going to be the compensating balance amount of the loan that we don't really get to, to use, utilize in the way we would like to utilize it. So we're going to say, all right, let's do a subcalculation of that. The required compensating balance, we're going to take the loan amount of the 350,000, 20% of it is going to be the compensating balance rate. That would be 70,000. So of the 350, in essence, we wouldn't be able to use the 70,000 of it, but they're allowing us to, to count this 15,000 towards the compensating balance. Therefore, the 70,000 minus the 15,000 would give us the 55,000. So of the 350000 because we already have some money in, in the minimum checking account, uh, we, only, we have 55000 rather than the 70000 rather than the full 20% as the compensating balance requirement on, on the new money that we're basically going to be getting here in terms of how we will be using it. So now we got to think, okay, that means that, what does that mean? Let's pull out the trusty calculator here. That means that we're going to be getting a loan for the 350000 minus the 55000 We get to actually do stuff with the 295000 The 295000 So now let's think, all right, well, what does that mean in terms of like uh, the effective interest rate? If I was to compare it to other loans, uh, we, we know now the cost of the loan is 63000 And the, the amount of the loan that I actually get to use is 295000 so let's use those numbers to then figure out what, what the effective interest rate is so I can use that standard rate that I can compare then to other, other loan options I might have. Now the effective interest rate calculation, we're going to use this calculation equals I or the rate times P, which this time we're going to use not the loan amount, but the amount we actually get to use, the 295000 times T. It's a one-year loan, so T will simply be one. So let's do that. We're going to say the effective interest rate. Then it's going to be the cost of the loan, which is just the interest in this case, the 63000 we calculated up above. The loan uh, minus the compensating balance, that's going to be this 295, meaning we're, we're calculating this on the amount of the loan we actually get to use, right? The 295000 And then we're going to say the percent of a year which is just one. We're going to say the days in the year are 360 divided by the, I mean, the days in the loan is 360, which is 12 times 30. Uh, we're assuming like a nice even 30 day month to give us 360 days rather than 365. But in any case, 360 over 360 will give us one. And then we're going to say then that the that the loan or P times T is going to be just P in this case, which is the subtotal. And that's going to be then uh, now we've got the interest divided by the basically the loan amount right so the interest here is the cost of the loan this is the amount of the loan we actually get to use that'll give us a rate if we divide that out about 21.36 so that's that'll be our effective rate that we can then kind of compare to other to other options that we might have let's do that again let's do the scenario again we're going to say little different numbers here we're going to say all right the company we want to borrow we got to take out a loan of forty thousand. Now, remember, when we take out the loan, we got to think about how much money we need if we have this kind of compensating balance and then think about, well, how big does the loan need to be to, to p figure out what we need? Uh, to, you know, how, how big does the loan need to be so that when they take out the compensating balance, I'm going to be left with enough money that I need to do stuff with. So we did that. We looked at that a bit in the prior presentation. Here, we're just going to assume a loan of 40000 Interest rate is going to be the 11%, compensating balance 26%, meaning that normally they would take 26% basically out of the loan, in essence, and, and it, we wouldn't be able to use it in the same way that we want to use the, the loan for, possibly. So, but then we're going to, the one other factor we're going to say that would normally be then, so we'd say, okay, the loan is for 40,000, and then times 0.26, they're going to take out basically 10,004 that I don't get to use the 40, I don't have. I can't do everything I want to do with the 40,000. So minus the 40,000, that would be to make the loan over only 20, 29, 6 that I get to do stuff with basically. But 
we're going to say, hey, the company then says, well, we have some money in the bank uh, that can we count that towards this 26% requirement? And the bank says, yes, we can. So we have this $3,000 then in the bank. And since that's a minimum amount in the bank should give the bank a little bit more security, lower the risk that we won't be able to pay off the loan. And they allow us to count that towards part of this 26,000, allowing us then to get a, to, to use a little bit more of this 40,000 loan. So now our questions, questions are going to be, well, uh, first, we have to think about the loan amount. We're, we thought about that last time. I won't get into how big does the loan need to be. The loan's just going to be for the 40000 We want to know, well, what's the effective interest rate? Because you have an 11% interest rate here, but then we have this 26% that I don't get to do as much with. So what's the effective rate on the money we actually get to use? And given the fact that we have this 20% com compensating balance and this amount in the bank, how much of that 40,000 do we get to use? So let's think of, at some of those calculations. Let's first look at the interest calculation, the cost of the loan. So the interest calculation is P times R times T, which is the loan times the rate. That's a yearly rate times T. T is one year in this case, therefore it's just one. So we just got the loan is gonna be the full loan, the 40,000, not the, not, we're not subtracting out the 26% or dealing with the 3,000 here. We're not dealing with a compensating balance. We got to pay interest on the full loan of the 40,000. Rate 11%. That then's going to give us the 4,400. Then let's consider the compensating balance given the fact that we have a $40,000 loan, but then we have this 26%. So it's basically going to be 40,000 40, times 26% minus the 3,000 that they gave us credit for for having our minimum balance in the bank. So we're going to say, all right, that means that we have the required compensating balance is the loan 40,000 we have the compensating balance rate 26 percent that means that the compensating balance would be the 10,400 but we have 3,000 in the bank that they're allowing us to count towards that 10,400 therefore we're at the 7,400 so 7,400 is the compensating balance so in other words loan is for 40,000 minus the 7,400, we actually get to use then 32,600. So now I know the interest cost of the loan, 4,400. I see the amount that we actually get to use. Let's now calculate the effective interest rate so I can compare this to other loans I might be able to get for, <clears throat> for that amount. So we can say the effective interest rate would be this calculation, the rate equals interest, the cost of the loan, divided by P, which is now going to be not the full loan amount, not the 40000 but the amount we get to use, the 32600 times T time, which is just one in this case because it's a one-year loan. So we're going to say, all right, here's the interest, there's the cost of the loan. We got the loan minus the compensating balance, which we'll call the principal, which is that 32600 we calculated up top, the 40000 minus the 7400 32,600, that's the amount we get to use. Then we've got the T calculation, the time calculation, which is going to be one, 360 days in a year, or you can say 365 divided by, I'm sorry, 360 or 365 days in the loan divided by 360 or 365 days in the year, or 12 months over 12 months or whatever, it comes out to one. So one, so now we got the 32,600 times one, that gives us, of course, 32600 So now we have the cost of the loan, the interest, divided by basically the amount of the loan we get to use. If we divide that out, that means we got 13.5%. So that'll be our effective rate, which once again, we can use to kind of compare it to other types of loans. If we could try to standardize the loans to the effective rate, we can use that as a comparison, our attempt to be comparing the same thing to the same thing, apples then to apples, as they say.